guys, how's it going? In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss about object orientation, which is a really important part of programming. And for this tutorial, I'm not going to go into details like when was it created and why was it created because I'm not interested. And uh, well, and I'm just going to concentrate on applying it in action in code. And how would you make your code more object oriented? This is just an introduction. This would be a a sub series of the Java tutorials because it's it's an integral part and it can't be missed so well we're just gonna start off with what object orientation is well it's about classes and objects I mean in in just one line it's about classes and objects and well yeah that's it and and class is well class is something that would define an object and class is like a a instruction set that would tell that the object should be like this and like this and like this and then you would store values in that object and then you would manipulate objects okay so first of all how would you define a class well if you see your previous tutorials you already have made a class which says public class tutorial 2 so you have a class called tutorial 2 and in any Java program you have a class called your file name and and as you know this should be equal to this so yeah so well you already have made classes but how would you implement that in terms of object orientation well uh, first of all what is an object object is something that can hold data and has a behavior and has a state well state is not important for us for now we're just going to concentrate on data and behavior data what is data for an object is it's its attributes what are attributes? Well, attributes define objects, and they they hold information for the object. Okay, considering an a, a an object animal, what can animal have? Well, animal can have name. It can have uh, what do you call number of legs. Animal can have age. Animal can have uh, well, that's it. Okay, what can object person have? Well, person can have a name as a string, attribute then it can have age as an integer attribute or uh, double if you want to go in points and stuff like that date of course which is a date attribute and yeah okay let's talk about behavior what can a person do well a person can say can talk basically he can say hello and stuff like that yeah and it can have behavior as uh, you know uh, something like uh, change name something like that and, and and it can have something like increase age well it's dependent on time but still it, it's called behavior and yeah stuff like that well well he has he has uh, talk as a, as a main behavior okay so let's start off by creating a class called person okay so we're gonna go right click tutorials and we're gonna select Java class and I'm just gonna call it person and in this class, I'm, I'm going to have some attributes. Okay, how do you put attributes? Your well, you put attributes as uh, you potato type and then attributes. And attributes are global; they are not defined in a method. So I'm just going to have a string attribute, and 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 attributes should be public so that they can be accessed from outside as well. Well, you know what? Actually, we're just going to make attributes private, and then we are going to. Uh, have um, get it and say this. Okay, so this is gonna say that uh, um, string private string name. We're just gonna initialize it empty private string. Oh, sorry, int age equals uh, zero private uh, uh, date date of birth equals no okay now we're gonna now each class is a class constructor uh, what's up with this yeah I already have an import as well so <laughs> okay now each class is a class constructor class constructor that would initialize the object so class constructor basically is a method but it can initialize the, the object based on that class. So for a class constructor, you can, it's just 
uh, uh, class name, and that's it. So in this case, that's your class constructor. Easy enough, yeah. Okay, and in this class constructor, you can pass values in it while defining the object, while instantiating an object, like name age data birth. So I'm just gonna say name. Uh, 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 so I want a string called name. Name. Then I want an int called age, and I want a date of date of of birth. Easy enough. So. At this point, you have defined how you would define this person object, right? Right. And then let's make it public. Actually, it is public, but uh, it's just my style. I, I, I just put public just, just, just to implicitly define it. Okay. So in now a class constructor would initiate would instantiate all or partial or none of its uh, these things. What you call it? Its attributes. So so. Uh, I'm just gonna say that this uh, that means this means this class dot name equals pass name this dot age equals age this dot date of birth equals date of birth now I have successfully instantiated the object with these values which have been passed in the class constructor now I'm gonna make some behaviors for the object for now, it's going to have public uh, void say hello. Uh, for say hello, I'm just going to have no values in it. So, and for saying hello, I'm just going to have a J option pane dot show message dialog uh, null, and I'm just going to say hi. My name is. And I am years old. Okay, so what we have now we have got attributes which are these. We have got a class constructor which is this. I mean, actually this. And we have got a, a behavior which says hello. So now we're going to use this object in doing something useful. Okay. So let's just create tutorial seven, and in this thing we are gonna create. We're just gonna have a public static Oh man, C shell habits, they're bad. Okay, so so now I'm I'm just gonna create a person now. I'm actually gonna create a person. So that person. I'm just gonna call the object called P. It calls new, so I'm, gonna, I'm, so I'm creating a new person, person, and then I have to use the class constructor which I defined previously. So that one, and if I press Control Space, it's gonna say me these. So, so it's asking for a name of that person. So I'm just gonna say David. Age. Okay. So person should be twenty nine. I don't know. And date of birth. So I'm just going to say date of birth should be, well, since he's 29 years old, okay, let's do it 10. Uh, 10 years old, then it should be 2002. So new date. Uh, oh, God damn. So I'm just going to say that this guy is year uh, 2002. 10. Uh, 24 whatever I can't think of anything okay so now I successfully created and if you're wondering what this dash is it just means that this method is depreciated and is no longer in use in future Java versions that's it so you don't need to worry about it now but well we would find a way around okay so now I've created a person P and then I'm gonna say person to say hello so I'm just gonna say P dot say hello see so I'm creating an so I'm creating an object, um, storing attributes, and then I'm saying I'm calling it to say to ha uh, to show its behavior. So this is the main base of object orientation. Okay, so let's just run this program and let's see what happens. I'm just gonna press six, and this is gonna 
hopefully. Come on. Hi, my name is David and I'm 10 years old. So now we have successfully utilized its its uh, its capabilities to to create a person object and say hello. Well, if you did not have object orientation, you would have to have it like this: string name, string uh, age. Oh, sorry. String name equals David. Uh, int age equals ten. Uh, date uh, date of birth. Date of birth equals new date uh, okay so you would have to have it like this and then you would have to manually write down that every time you create a person that that uh, 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 that that um, thingy this thing you would have to write down again and again I mean this is really short you can write this down quickly but in, in but while developing big applications this would be pain it, this would be really painful for you so Object orientation would generalize stuff that you need again and again, that you need access to again and again, and stuff like that, which is really helpful while coding big programs. And we would go into it later. And in the next tutorial, we're going to learn more about object orientation, about core concepts, how they work, how they, you know, they how they can be used to make a better program and stuff like that. So in this tutorial, what you've seen so far is that object orientation of helps avoid repetition like this, and it's it, it's not only about repeat, it's it's like not only about repetition, it's about uh, writing organized code. So you have all the um, attributes interconnected in one class called person. Then you know, if you have a animal, you have animal name and number of legs and stuff like that in animal class. So so your code is rather organized and and it can be accessed easily so you can so if you want to access the name you can just say p dot uh, p dot get name I mean uh, I mean we don't have we, we haven't created that method yet but then you can just access it or if you or if you change this to public you know and if you change this to public actually then then you can then you can access like this like a p dot uh, c you can access age, you can access date of birth, you can access name, and so, so it's really helpful in in doing stuff like this. So, well, I mean, I would rather prefer to have object orientation than having individual stuff like this. And another benefit of object orientation is while storing, uh, you know, arrays. If you wanna have a, a an an array that can hold name, age, and date of birth, you'd have to have three parallel arrays having name. Uh, I mean, one uh, string array, another integer array, and another date array. Well, if you had object orientation, you can just store persons. You can just create one person array like this. Person uh, p array uh, equals new person, and then you can put in all, all all the person that you have, like p in here, and then and then if you have new person and like something like this, and and well. Yeah, so and then you can just access these things like by just doing p array zero dot uh, and then you can access its properties here. So as you see, object orientation is really helpful in in in, in organizing your code, in making life simpler, in 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 having in having objects and and that can have behavior and attributes and things like that. So it's really helpful and it in and. You would really see why it's really helpful in the next tutorial and well I hope you guys understood this very well. I've tried my best. If you have any queries or or, or any uh, suggestions just comment down or comment on my blog or something. I would I would try to get back to you and I would try to uh, look over it as soon as possible. Till then, enjoy creating objects, enjoy your classes and explore this world is really good. It's really good guys. See you later.